Hello. Um, I want to record another project that I was working on. And lately I've been listening to a lot of the Dark Souls 3 soundtrack. And I've been inspired by that lately. I've gone through all the Elder Ring soundtracks. And I, that's a whole different beast to go over. So I don't want to tackle that yet to make music that sounds like that. But I really like what they do in Dark Souls 3. And this is especially inspired by Slave Night Gale. And it was in part because I accidentally chose the same key that Slave Night Gale chose. Um, or Yuka Kitamura chose for that piece. Um, so it might sound a bit reminiscent when I use the same chords. But I made a whole new chord progression. I tried out new techniques. Um, and I have some new sections I want to try out. Especially this last section. Very dissonant and weird compared to the rest of the piece. Um, and let me play it so you have an idea of what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's about it. Um, I wasn't able to show the bass line, but it's pretty simple. Just F, G, F, G, F, a little bit of E, a little bit of C down here. And uh, I, I had a lot of help from uh, Moonlap's Piano. You guys should really check out his channel. He does a lot of transcriptions of the uh, Dark Souls, uh, Elden Ring, and Bloodborne soundtracks. And he has plenty more to come, too. And now he's dabbling in making his own orchestral stuff. But he knows a lot of music theory, and he helped me out with this piece. So <laughs> thank you very much, my man. Um, and a lot of that has to do with figuring out how to create tension and releasing tension. Um, as well as I wanted to have, I wanted to try out doing chord progressions based on things I've seen online. Um, so I think in the beginning, I started with a, what, five, two, one? I don't remember. Um, and I have it over here because I'm I'm stupid and I can't <laughs> figure out chords from keys themselves. But I wrote all the different chords I would have and be using in the piece. And these are all the chords in the key of F minor. So I have all the chords here and this is something that I started playing with. And it's a good way to get started. Now I don't want to always just be looking over which chord I want to be using and then slap it in there, do some inversions. Um, I just wanted it as a bass so I can get the idea and feel of what the song was going for and then start improvising on my own. Um, improvisations start to happen here and then over here I really want it to be like weird, gross, um, and E is the flat, is, is the flat 7 I think, no raise 7, something like that. Uh, it's right below, right below F, so it's going to sound weird all together. And then with the B, which is the flat 5. That sounds gross. That sounds a lot better, I think. <laughs> that sounds a lot more desperate and dire and, and weird. Um, as well as over here, some parts didn't sound off because of, that B, so that's there to include if I want to. There, it sounds a lot better. So it's just stuff that I can play with afterwards and uh, and see what I want to do when I start actually orchestrating it. Um, so when I have the next part of this video, I will 
probably have most of it written down in orchestra, hopefully as a first draft, so I'll see when that happens. Hello once again. I have finished the first iteration or first part of the process of transcribing this into orchestra. I have some critiques of this, but I want to play this out first so that you guys can hear the progress made. So this is very direct piano to orchestra. So a lot of the, let me go into it. So each part was played exactly how the piano was played. Um, and this here is the piano. So you can see all the notes, you know, overlapping. And here this bass line is a lot more apparent um, with the bass line created with the cellos, the bass, and the timpani. Um, let's go into that first, actually, since there is some pretty interesting stuff. Um, a lot of Yuka Kitamura's songs have a very, like, a lot of it's chordal, but then it still feels like it's moving. It's very fast, and it, it feels very aggressive still. Um, and I was able to achieve this effect by having a lot of timpani, and this is the pattern for the timpani. So it's always playing in thirds, um, as well as the, let's get the cello and the bass strings. And then we added on the bells and cymbals. See, percussion is very important. Even though it's not really a main focus, it does have a lot of effect on it. And whether it's subconscious or conscious, this will be the driving, like a very big driving factor in how aggressive this piece feels or how fast it's going. And right now we're going for a boss theme, so you want it to be pretty fast and aggressive, regardless of how sad, happy, disturbing the chords sound. So here I had them softly aggressive on the beat and then another soft one also in thirds. And I'll have an example afterwards showing exactly what this is supposed to represent or mimic. But I, I think this is a lot of, like this is a cool technique that I've seen Yuka Kitamura use in a lot of her tracks. Now this is just the percussion side of things. Um, the next point of interest that I want to highlight is the soloist. Now, a lot of Yuka Kitamura's tracks, let's see, Slave Night Gale, Dark Eater Medir, Abyss Watchers, the main theme, those ones all feature solo violinists and solo choir, all done by her. Um, she's really versatile in that effect. Um, but here I have the... <laughs> We're gonna we're gonna mimic Yuka's voice exactly, but I have voice of the rapture here um, by sound iron, I think oh, yeah. It sounds really cool um, and Combined she often combines that same melody with a solo violin and here I have Sinna strings Oh, why is it not? And that also sounds really well. We'll put them together, and that's often what she does. And let's uh, isolate them so we just hear them by themselves. Let me pull up the examples from them as well. 
So here, there we go. So now we have them uh, modulated as well. And as you can see, their modulated tracks are down here, these two ones. Let me put that up side by side so you can see the melody and the dynamics play at the same time. Now, this is, I think, a signature style of at least Yuka's Dark Souls 3 soundtrack. Immediately, you get that Slave Night Gale type sound. And we are also using, you know, F minor, as I explained before. But regardless, this is, <laughs> she uses this a lot in combination with fake choir or virtual choir. So we really are kind of following the steps of how a Dark Souls 3 track would be made. Let's combine the choir in here. Let's see what chords those are playing. Now, my critique that I mentioned before is I think a lot of these, the tracks that I'm working with, I think sound too sad. And I think that's because I go too much chord, so I'll play all three notes in the chord, and then I'll stack those and make those sound really full. But I think what I should be doing is just having intervals, just have two notes instead of all three. Because as it's it doesn't sound aggressive enough. And I may, and I, I should, I think, be deviating from those chords a little bit. Like, have them as a bass, but then have other notes that go on top or below them from other instruments. Because right now, if I scroll through all of them, uh, let's see, cello follows that. The viola follows a chord. Violins, two follows a chord. Violin, one is the top of the chord. The solo, also on the chord. Like, it's, it's too similar. And I want to experiment with just having them deviate a little bit. But I'll try. I, I, don't, I don't know how successful that'll be. Um, but let's go back to the choir. So the choir here, working with Yuka's voice. Let me turn on the dynamics for the choir as well. There you go, right here. D sharp. Let's change that. Ah, I don't know. <laughs> I have to experiment a bit with it more. Um, but yeah, this is the progress I've made. I still have some more sections, although I do want to start improvising my own stuff since I don't know how I feel about those sections. So I'll see you in the next part, hopefully, when this piece is finished. Hello, I'm back with the final iteration of this Yuka Kitamura kind of Slave Nightgale inspired piece. And I added a last section here. I wanted to do a lot more, but I kind of took a lot of time off the project. And then when I got back into it, I didn't remember how to write. <laughs> uh, my days are sounding completely different. So I just decided to stop it here. It's about a minute long, really not that long for a boss theme, but it gets the point across, I think. Um, I changed a few notes here and there. I think the intro is a bit more it's like off sounding. But yeah, it still has the very same cadence. And here I remove the solo violin and choir in in opting for you know having a more bombastic type of choir as well as uh utilizing the b here the flat five over this whole chord um which chord is this five c no f and c is that just the one chord yeah that is I like to keep all my chords on the side over here so I can keep track of them. <laughs> I am in no way a amazing musician, so use use the tools around you to help you. And eventually, I think you'll build a muscle to it. Um, so we have F, G sharp, and C as the one chord, uh, which is apparent right here. So yeah, this is indeed the first chord. And that's 
we're putting the B over the first chord as well, the flat five. So let's see what it sounds like. I wrap back the solo choir in the end. Um, I found that when writing the piano sketch for it, you can see that that flat five sounds good here. It sounds very natural, but when you put it all together with the piano only, It might discourage you from sounding like it doesn't fit in, um, but it can also indicate that you're way out of key. But <laughs> uh, experiment and just try how things sound, because um, we're we're at a point where, you know, music theory can apply, but also just have a feel for it. I'm not a great music theorist. I'm still learning a lot, but a lot of this is just going off what sounds good and what doesn't. Eventually, I want the two points to converge. What sounds good using music theory. So we're on that journey together. <laughs> so don't don't take my word for music theory completely. Let's look at the choir and see what they're doing. Yeah, so here they have the very similar melody. B and A sharp really work well with the F and E here. It's a very natural progression for it. We see that the B being our flat five usually sounds very scary. Um, and I, a lot of the Dark Souls pieces will either have a flat five or a five chord as their tension or thing that they want to resolve back to the root chord. As you can see here, B and E are really te like big tension builders. And because our flat nine, is that correct? Yeah. Flat nine, which is basically just one semitone underneath our root, our root note, also sounds really good, as well as the B resolves to the C. Very easy to release tension that way. And then here it's it's a lot more simple, but it sounds a lot more epic with the choir in the background. Um I'm trying to think of what else I haven't covered in the last section, since I think those points were the biggest points was uh percussion, uh and the bass is what keeps the rhythm going. The rhythm is very important. Even in a very like this song doesn't sound fast, fast things are happening. Activation. The triplets happen a lot of times. As these are all written in triplets. We'll have the cello as well. But yeah, um, I'll show you guys the final product. Uh, I've learned a lot from this, and I hope you have too, and I can't wait to see you all in the next piece. Uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.